The Panther was a German medium tank deployed during World War II on the eastern and western fronts in Europe from mid-1943 to its end in 1945. It had the Ordnance Inventory designation of SD KFZ-171 until 27 February 1944. It was designated as the Panzerkampfwagen v Panther when Hitler ordered that the Roman numeral V be deleted. Contemporary English language reports sometimes refer to it as the Mark V. The Panther was intended to counter the Soviet T-34 and to replace the Panzer III and Panzer V. Nevertheless, it served alongside the latter and the heavier Tiger I until the end of the war. It is considered one of the best tanks of World War II for its excellent firepower and protection. Its reliability was less impressive. The Panther was a compromise. While having essentially the same engine as the Tiger I, it had more efficient frontal hull arm of better gun penetration, was lighter and faster, and could traverse rough terrain better than the Tiger I. The trade-off was weaker side armor, which made it vulnerable to flanking fire. The Panther proved to be effective in open country and long-range engagements, but did not provide enough high explosive firepower against infantry. The Panther was far cheaper to produce than the Tiger I, and only slightly more expensive than the Panzer IV. Key elements of the Panther design, such as its armor, transmission, and final drive, were simplifications made to improve production rates and address raw material shortages. The overall design remained somewhat over-engineered. The Panther was rushed into combat at the Battle of Kursk despite numerous unresolved technical problems leading to high losses due to mechanical failure. Most design flaws were rectified in the German retreat, though the bombing of production plants, increasing shortages of high-quality alloys for critical components, shortage of fuel and training space, and the declining quality of crews all impacted on the type's effectiveness, development and production. Design the Panther was born out of a project started in 1938 to replace the Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks. The initial requirements of the VK-20 series called for a fully tracked vehicle weighing 20 tons and design proposals by Krupp, Daimler, Benz and Mann ensued. These designs were abandoned and Krupp dropped out of the competition entirely as the requirements increased to a vehicle weighing 30 tons. A direct reaction to the encounters with the Soviet T-34 and KV-1 tanks and against the advice of Warproof 6, the T-34 outclassed the existing models of the Panzer III and IV. At the insistence of General Heinz Guderian, a special tank commission was created to assess the T-34. Among the features of the Soviet tank considered most significant were the sloping armor, which gave much improved shot deflection and also increased the effective armor thickness against penetration, the wide track which improved mobility over soft ground, and the 76.2mm guns, which had good armor penetration and fired an effective high-explosive round. Daimler-Benz, which designed the successful Panzer III and Stug III, and machine and fabric Augsburg Nuremberg AG were given the task of designing a new 30-35 ton tank, designated VK 30.02, by April 1942. The DB design resembled the T-34 in its hull and turret and was also to be powered by a diesel engine. It was also driven from the rear drive sprocket with the turret situated forward. The incorporation of a diesel engine promised increased operational range, reduced flammability and allowed for more efficient use of petroleum reserves. Hitler himself considered a diesel engine imperative for the new tank. DB's proposal used an external leaf spring suspension, in contrast to the MAN proposal of twin torsion bars. Warproof 6's opinion was that the leaf spring suspension was a disadvantage and that using torsion bars would allow greater internal hull width. It also opposed the rear drive because of the potential for track fouling. Daimler-Benz still preferred the leaf springs over a torsion bar suspension as it resulted in a silhouette about 200 mm shorter and rendered complex shock absorbers unnecessary. 
the employment of a rear drive provided additional crew space and also allowed for a better slope on the front hull, which was considered important in preventing the penetration by armor-piercing shells. On 5 March 1942, Albert Speer reported that Hitler considered the Daimler-Benz design to be superior to Mann's design. The Mann design embodied more a conventional configuration, with the transmission and drive sprocket in the front and a centrally mounted turret. It had a petrol engine and eight torsion bar suspension axles per side. Because of the torsion bar suspension and the drive shaft running under the turret basket, the Man Panther was higher and had a wider hull than the DB design. The Henschel firm's design concepts for their Tiger I tank's suspension drive components using its characteristic Schachtelaufwerk format, large, overlapping, interleaved road wheels with a slack track using no return rollers for the upper run of track also features shared with almost all German military half-track designs since the late 1930s were repeated with the man design for the Panther. These multiple large, rubber-rimmed steel wheels distributed ground pressure more evenly across the track. The man proposal also complemented Rhine Metal's already designed turret modified from that of the VK45.01 and used a virtually identical Maybach V12 engine to the Tiger I heavy tanks Maybach HL230 power plant model. The two designs were reviewed from January to March 1942. Reich Minister TODT, and later, his replacement Albert Speer, both recommended the DB design to Hitler because of its advantages over the initial Mann design. At the final submission, Mann refined its design. Having learned from the DB proposal apparently through a leak by a former employee in the WA Proof 6, senior engineer Heinrich Ernst Nyeckkamp and others, a review by a special commission appointed by Hitler in May 1942 selected the Mann design. Hitler approved this decision after reviewing it overnight. One of the principal reasons given for this decision was that the man design used an existing turret designed by Rhein Metal Borsai, while the DB design would have required a brand new turret and engine to be designed and produced delaying the commencement of production. This time-saving measure compromised the subsequent development of the design. Albert Speer recounts in his autobiography Inside the Third Reich since the Tiger had originally been designed to weigh 50 tons but as a result of Hitler's demands had gone up to 57 tons. We decided to develop a new 30-ton tank whose very name, Panther, was to signify greater agility. Though light in weight, its motor was to be the same as the Tiger's, which meant it could develop superior speed. But in the course of a year Hitler once again insisted on clapping so much armor on it, as well as larger guns, that it ultimately reached 48 tons, the original weight of the Tiger. Production A mild steel prototype of the man design was produced by September 1942 and, after testing at Kummersdorf, was officially accepted. It was put into immediate production. The start of production was delayed, mainly because of a shortage of specialized machine tools needed for the machining of the hull. Finished tanks were produced in December and suffered from reliability problems as a result. The demand for this tank was so high that the manufacturing was soon expanded beyond man to include Daimler-Benz, machine and fabric Niedersix and Hanover and Henschel and Sohn in Kassel. The initial production target was 250 tanks per month at the Mann plant Nuremberg. This was increased to 600 per month in January 1943. Despite determined efforts, this figure was never reached due to disruption by Allied bombing and manufacturing and resource bottlenecks. Production in 1943 averaged 148 per month. In 1944, it averaged 315 a month, peaking with 380 in July and ending around the end of March 1945, with at least 6,000 built in total. Frontline combat strength peaked on 1 September 1944 at 2,304 tanks, but that same month a record number of 692 tanks were reported lost. 
Allied bombing was first directed at the common choke point for both Panther and Tiger production, the Maybach engine plant. This was bombed the night of 27-28 April 1944 and production was halted for five months. A second factory had already been planned, the Auto Union Sigma plant, and this came online in May 1944. The targeting of Panther factories began with a bombing raid on the DB plant on 6 August 1944, and again on the night of 23-24 August. Man was struck on 10 September, 3 October and 19 October 1944, and then again on 3 January and 2021 February 1945. MNH was not attacked until 14 and 28 March 1945. In addition to interfering with tank production goals, the bombing forced a steep drop in the production of spare parts which as a percentage of tank production dropped from 25 to 30% in 1943 to 8% in late 1944. This compounded the problems with reliability and the numbers of operational panthers, as tanks in the field had to be cannibalized for parts. Production figures The Panther was the third most produced German armored fighting vehicle. After the Sturmgeschütz three assault gun, tank destroyer at 9,408 units, and the Panzer IV tank at 8,298 units. Cost One source has cited the cost of a Panther tank as 117,100 Reichmarks. This compared with 82,500 room for the Stug III, 96,163 room for the Panzer III, 103,462 room for the Panzer IV, and 250,800 room for the Tiger I. These figures did not include the cost of the armament and radio. Therefore, the Panther tank was one of the most cost-effective of the German armored fighting vehicles of World War II. Using slave labor on the production lines greatly reduced costs but also greatly increased sabotage. French army studies in 1947 found that many Panthers had been sabotaged during production. These cost figures should be understood in the context in which the various armored fighting vehicles were first designed, as the Germans increasingly strove for production methods that would allow for higher production rates, and thus steadily reduce the cost of their armored fighting vehicles. By comparison for example, another source has cited the total cost of the early production Tiger I in 1942-1943 to be as high as 800,000 room. The process of streamlining the production of German armored fighting vehicles first began after Speer became Reich Minister in early 1942 and steadily accelerated through to 1944. The production of the Panther tank coincided with this period of increased manufacturing efficiency. At the beginning of the war, German armored fighting vehicle manufacturers had employed labor-intensive and costly manufacturing methods unsuitable for the needs of mass production, even with streamlined production methods. Germany never approached the efficiency of Allied manufacturing during World War II. 